Hi everyone, my name is Julian. I am a technical evangelist with AWS. And today I'm going to talk about Amazon ECR and ECS, which allow you to uh, deploy and manage Docker containers on AWS. This is a replay of the session uh, that, I, uh, that I gave at the loft in Tel Aviv a few days ago. So let's get started. Um, first of all, let's uh, talk about the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, so when you're using Docker on your uh, development machine, uh, you only have to worry about a single server, right? You only have to worry about how much processing power and how much uh, memory is available on that on that machine to deploy your containers. And you know, there's no question where you're going to deploy those containers. You're going to deploy them on that single machine. Now, imagine we want to have more than one server where we're uh, deploying containers. Imagine we have 10, 20, 50, maybe 100 servers that are available to deploy Docker containers. Uh, now, you know, all, the, all of a sudden it becomes uh, more of a problem to uh, decide where to put a specific container. Well, that's exactly the problem we're trying to solve. Um, given a certain amount of processing power and memory provided by um, a cluster of, uh, of servers, um, and uh, given a number of containers of uh, all sizes and shapes, uh, how can we best deploy them uh, in, in a minimal amount of time and uh, and uh, no matter what the the available resources are, no matter what the the load is on that cluster, how can we find uh, available resources to deploy a container uh, in uh, in a scalable fashion? And that means in a linear time. And uh, if you look at that uh, child uh, toy on on the right side, that's really exactly what we're trying to do, right? Uh, we have a grid of uh, of resources of different sizes and, and shapes and uh, we're trying to fit uh, the, the red uh, the red circle or the blue square in the right spot imagine that grid was uh, a thousand by a thousand uh, uh, places you know that that's a that's a big problem I mean uh, even for an adult right <laughs> that becomes quite a quite a challenge to put the right uh, the right shape in the right place so that's the problem we're trying to solve and uh, that really means managing a cluster of uh, servers running Docker. And uh, as we all know, managing clusters is a, is a complex problem, um, mainly because it's really difficult to have a consistent view on the state of the cluster. And that's why the first requirement of uh, cluster or orchestration should really be distributed state management, knowing exactly what the resources are on any given node, knowing exactly what the what container is running where, uh, and you know having no matter what is happening on the cluster, you know nodes restarting, nodes failing, containers starting, containers failing, etc. Knowing exactly uh, what is going on and having a consistent view on uh, on that cluster. Uh, the second important thing is, as I've mentioned earlier, scalable scheduling. You know, uh, it's probably easy to schedule a couple of containers on a couple of servers. Now, imagine you have a thousand servers uh, loaded at uh, ninety percent, and uh, all of a sudden you're asking to uh, deploy, you know, maybe a hundred more containers. Uh, it should really take the same amount of time, no matter what the size of the cluster is, no matter what the load of the cluster is. So should really be linear time scheduling uh, no matter what is happening on the cluster and obviously the third one is built-in high availability you know clustering means multiple servers and you know the more serv the more servers you have the more likely it is that one is going to fail at the worst possible time so high availability high availability is not something that the, the user should have to build it should be something that is provided by the the by the cluster management system and so uh, in uh, in april 2015 uh, aws has launched ecs ec2 container service so there you have it you know it says ec2 in the name and obviously it's going to be heavily based on ec2 
instances and EC2 mechanisms that probably you already know, like auto scaling and and so on. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, using ECS does not incur any additional charge. Uh, you will only be paying for the resources that you create, so in instances, load balancers, etc. But ECS itself does not add anything to your bill. Um, later, uh, in 2015, uh, AWS launched uh, Amazon ECR, uh, which is um, a Docker registry hosted on AWS. So obviously you could use ECS uh, with the Docker Hub or your, uh, your private registry, but uh, it's probably quite convenient to have uh, an AWS hosted registry like ECR. And so, you know, in just a few clicks, you can create your registry, create your repos, uh, you know, push and pull your images. And um, <coughs> it's really um, super easy to use and, uh, and, you know, quite competitive when it comes to, to pricing, you know, slightly more expensive than S3, but still, you know, very competitive and a nice option to have your... Uh, um, your images, your Docker images, located real close to your uh, to your servers. Uh, so before we go on, uh, I should start an ECS cluster. It takes a few minutes to uh, to build, and uh, so I'll do that right now and uh, continue with the presentation. So the first thing I'm going to show you is actually this. It's the ECS command line interface, which is, uh, uh, you know, I like to call it a developer-friendly command line. Um, uh, it's really high level. It has, as you can see, just a few commands that allow you to uh, create clusters, deploy services, etc. So it's really the preferred way uh, of doing this. Uh, obviously, uh, you can also use the uh, traditional AWS command line, AWS ECS, uh, which again provides, you know, more options and probably finer grained uh, operations, uh, you know, lower level operations on, on the cluster, and and we'll use some of those as well. But for now, uh, we're going to keep it really simple, and we're going to use ECS CLI. So the first thing I'm going to do is to configure a new cluster. So I'm going to call it my cluster and I'm going to start that in EU West one. So that's not creating the cluster. That's just, you know, declaring that, okay, I'm going to work with a cluster called my cluster located in EU West one. Now let's actually start the cluster. So I'm going to use the ECL CLI up command. Going to specify an, a key pair for SSH access. I'm going to allow ECS to, whoops, slight typo here, allow ECS to create IAM roles to manage instances. I'm going to have three instances in that cluster and I'm going to use T2 micro instances and that's it. So there you go. Um, and you know, Pretty much immediately, you know, you see that CloudFormation uh, stack status message appearing. So it really, you know, doesn't hide the fact that uh, building an ECS cluster uh, is actually based on, you know, running a CloudFormation stack. And, uh, well, we can take a look at that as well. So there you go, you know. Amazon ECS CLI setup my cluster and it's in progress so probably lots of stuff going on right now you know creating a VPC etc because the that cluster is going to run in its own VPC which is quite convenient and uh, and you know if you want to see all the all the details obviously you can always look at the template here all right but that's a little more detail that than we want at this point. So we're, we're going to let uh, CloudFormation build that and we're going to talk a little more about um, ECS.
So that's the, the architecture of ECS and uh, should look familiar to you guys uh, if you've uh, already worked with uh, EC2 and ELBs, etc. So uh, what do we see here? Uh, we see uh, uh, three instances. Oops, sorry about that. Three instances. One, two, three, right? And they're called ECS instances. And um, uh, what they really are uh, is, you know, EC2 instances uh, running uh, a specific AMI, a specific Amazon machine image, which is called the uh, ECS optimized AMI. And uh, it's an Amazon Linux image with a Docker installation and uh, the ECS agent. We're going to talk about the agent in a minute. Okay, so an ECS instance is really a, a special kind of EC2 instance configured to run Docker. So we'll have three of those. Um, and, you know, each of them, as I've said, is running Docker. And inside Docker, we're going to uh, start our containers. And the, the role of the ECS agent is to connect that instance to uh, the ECS backend, right? And the ECS backend is really about, you know, mainly two things. Uh, the the distributed state management, which I mentioned earlier, that's the key value store that you see here, in charge of knowing exactly what's going on uh, with instances, what's going on with containers, and the cluster management engine, which is you know the scheduling and uh, and you know basically the management uh, layer for uh, for the cluster. And you know that's really all we need to know. Uh, so that that yellow block is is you know strictly backend stuff. You have nothing to do with that. Uh, all you have to uh, to take care about is creating new clusters and, as we will see in a few minutes, deploying instances. Uh, obviously, um, once we have deployed containers on our instances, we could have load balancing for those instances in the form of ELBs. Uh, of course, these instances could be deployed in, in different availability zones. So again, we're strictly using EC2 features here. So, you know, bottom line, if you know EC2, you already know quite a, quite a lot about ECS. And, uh, and uh, the fact that ECS is based on EC2 is going to, uh, um, you know, bring ECS uh, all the high availability and, and scaling and load balancing uh, goodness that uh, that you know we've uh, loved in EC2 for a while. So you know it's really uh, building on top of EC2. So I think that's uh, that's really nice. If you're interested in looking at the agent, or uh, if you want to, if you don't want to use the um, uh, ECS optimized AMI, if you want to use your own AMI, it's it's absolutely possible. You just need to uh, uh, deploy the agent on um, on your own. Uh, instances on your own AMIs, and it will connect to the backend. So you're in, you're not tied to the uh, to the ECS AMI in any way. You can really do what you want. And plus, you know, it's open source. You can you can check it out on GitHub, right? Um, I should probably pause here, and uh, we're going to look at a few case studies in a minute.